All right, hey AP Chemistry, just want to give you a little bit of a heads up or help on the lab molar volume and hydrogen gas. This overall chemical reaction is Mg solid, which is the magnesium ribbon that you're using, plus 2HCl, which is going to be a two molar solution, yields MgCl2, and that's aqueous, and we can't see it, it'll be in solution, plus hydrogen gas, and that's the gas that forms in this reaction, okay? So, first heads up for this lab is the magnesium ribbon that you need to use is very small. Either something way less than 0 0.01 grams, so 0 0.007, 0 0.009. I think the one that I'm using is about 0 0.007 grams right now. Anything larger and your data will be off. Um, or about 0.4 centimeters, so less than a half. And so I kind of have a very, very tiny piece right here. You could barely make it out and see it. And I have it coiled into my copper wire. If you have somebody that has small hands, they might be your best friend for this. If, but if Mr. Charlie can do this, you can do it. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you already have a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder on your lab bench. You also have a distilled water bottle and it says DH2O. If it says DH2O, D stands for distilled. So just make sure you know that if you're asking for, oh, what's this bottle? If it says DH2O, it's distilled water. And in the fume hood, you're going to have to get a beaker or take the beaker and pour it into another beaker, a bit of two molar HCl. That is the concentration of the acid that we're using. So this is going to be the 2 molar HCl, okay? So, as part of the procedure, it says to coil the copper wire, that's this gold thing, coil the copper wire around the magnesium metal. I was able to do that, and with me shaking it, it doesn't come off, right? So it took my hands, but it says that you could use a pen to wrap it around. You want to make sure that you do that. And then, as you can see, every graduated cylinder that you have that's 10 milliliters has this black stopper on the top. What you're going to do is you're going to take this black stopper out and you're going to put the copper wire long thin end through the thin, hole, the thin hole of the black tubing right like this. So notice the tubing is like triangular. All right, so I don't know if you can see it. Notice the tubing is triangular. You want to put it in through here, okay? So you're going to put it in upside down just so that the copper wire and the magnesium strip is resting just at the top, but be careful on pulling, because if you pull too much, the magnesium ribbon's gonna come out, and it's probably gonna do that for me soon. All right, and in doing that, I'm gonna try and tighten and coil this copper wire around my rubber stopper. So now if I do that, I wanna make sure that I do it that this stays in place, okay? So I'm gonna try and wrap this around a little bit tighter without loosening my magnesium ribbon. Okay, should be fine. This might take a couple of tries of keeping that magnesium ribbon in there, but mine looks fine and I'll make sure I could hold that. All right, so you kind of want it like that. So I'm gonna put this down on the side so I know that that's there. And then the procedure calls for you to put about five milliliters of hydrochloric acid in here. So make sure you put five milliliters of HCl. So, and remember when you read graduated cylinders, your eye level, okay? And don't pick it up, because it's hydrochloric acid. This stuff burns. So I'm putting this in here. I'm gonna put it up to the five milliliter mark, okay? And I got a little bit more than five milliliters in my beaker, just in case, okay? But that is five milliliters, so that's good. And then it says, with your wash bottle, Add water all the way to the top in the graduated cylinder. We're not using this graduated cylinder for measurement yet, or we're not using it for volume through the 10 milliliter mark. We're going past the 10 milliliter mark, if you could barely see it. You see where it says 10 there? You're going to go past it, so watch what I do. And you want to pour the water in slowly, because the density of the hydrochloric acid in the bottom here is going to be a bit more dense than the water. So you're gonna have two layers and you're gonna pour it in slowly and I'm gonna pour it in slowly through the top of the spout of the graduated cylinder and I should have two layers that have formed and I may not be able to see it yet but I definitely have two layers in there. I have my top water layer, distilled water layer and I have my bottom hydrochloric acid layer and don't disturb this because you don't wanna disturb this to 
make the mixing. I can kind of see a little bit of two layers in there right now. Then it asks you to put this stopper in the water layer of the graduated cylinder. And you might want to push down a bit so the stopper is a bit tight on there. And then you're going to invert it into about 250, 300 milliliters of water in a beaker. Okay? So I'm going to do this. Stop for this here. Notice how it's not bubbling. That means it did not reach the hydrochloric acid. Okay? So I know that the hydrochloric acid is on the bottom. Now I'm going to turn it upside down or invert it into my beaker. So I'm going to turn it upside down, invert it, and leave it standing like this. Okay? And this is how your book shows you to do that. So do you see how I have it like this? And you can see the hydrochloric acid slowly getting to the bottom. And what do you start seeing to happen? I start seeing bubbles happening at the bottom. And this is actually quite beautiful because my magnesium ribbon did not come out of the copper wire. And you could actually see, let me turn this a little bit better, you could actually see bubbles forming. And this is going to happen for a little while. It says about five minutes in the procedure. It may be longer, it may be less. Um, if it says, if your magnesium ribbon kind of falls out of the copper cage, it says to like jut or poke the graduated cylinder to make sure that it mixes with the hydrochloric acid, please do that because you want to make sure that the magnesium ribbon doesn't stay floating on top because your water layer is kind of going through the hydrochloric acid layer and they're both mixing, okay? So... That is your set, very, very easy setup for tomorrow. Originally, I wanted to do this with burettes, but I did not have enough stands, so we're going to use a 400 milliliter beaker, a 10 graduated cylinder, rubber stoppers, copper wire, and the magnesium ribbon. Okay? So I'm going to keep this here, and now we're going to talk a bit about calculations and things that you're going to cover. If you want, you could pause or stop the video and watch this or zoom past this on another day when you want to figure out the calculations. But this is also going to help you with your pre-lab, okay? So, couple of things that you're going to have to record or know for this lab. So, one thing that's going to happen is I'm going to need the volume of the H2 gas that comes out, okay? Well, you're going to read that from the graduated cylinder, and you got to be careful because you're going to be reading it upside down. So, my graduated cylinder kind of looks like this upside down, okay, mark, 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 okay, and I have my, let's say I have the water layer, or I have the layer of the water, maybe it goes all the way down to here, at the, if it would have been at the two milliliter mark, so this is upside down, sorry, let's say it's down here at the eight milliliter mark. Right? And this is seven, six, five, four, da 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 Just pretend like my graduated cylinder is long enough. If it's all the way down at the eight milliliter mark, that means that I have about eight milliliters of hydrogen gas that formed. However, it says something in your lab manual about making a correction and subtracting 0.2 because you're reading the meniscus upside down. So for my volume of H2 gas, I'm reading it directly from the graduated cylinder and then I'm subtracting 0.2 milliliters. And that's gonna be my volume, I'm gonna call it V of H2. And so on your lab report sheet, it says volume of H2 gas and corrected volume. Another thing that we're gonna need is the temperature of the reaction or of the H2 gas. Well, at least six lab benches have a thermometer. What you're gonna do is take the thermometer and poke it directly into the water in the beaker. And so I'm gonna put this in here. I'm gonna put it directly into the water that's in the beaker. And then I'm gonna record that temperature. So I'm gonna wait till the reaction's done, of course, until I re could record that temperature. So do you see how this is still going? It says wait five minutes, but it may be a little bit longer. I'm gonna record this temperature. Let's pretend like it was 23.5 degrees Celsius. So 23.5 degrees Celsius. And then what units do I have to convert degrees Celsius eventually into? Eventually I have to convert that into Kelvin. And so that'll be my temperature of H2 gas. Now, for my pressure of H2 gas, I'm gonna have to do a couple of things here. And this goes back to your question number 11 on your practice set. 
And it goes back to um, your pre-lab question. So if I want my pressure of hydrogen, I have to remember that this hydrogen gas was collected over water. So let's say this is my water layer. All right, I have my water layer. I'll have, and we did this t yesterday or today in class, I have water molecules that are in the vapor phase, and then I'll have hydrogen molecules. Okay, so there's a mixture of gases in here, and what did we say the total pressure of this mixture is equal to? If you remember, it's equal to the atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure. And how can I get that pressure? I look it up on weatherchannel.com. Weather channel. OK, so if I want that atmospheric pressure, that atmospheric pressure, if I look on weatherchannel.com, usually it says it's something in inches of mercury, inches of HD. And eventually, you have to convert that to atmospheres. OK? So I'll get that on weatherchannel.com. I could go from inches of mercury to millimeters of mercury, and then from millimeters of mercury to atmospheres. Now, there's also the water vapor that's in there. And so what's going to be an important piece of information that we could use with the temperature in order to figure out the pressure of that water on there? And the answer is the vapor pressure. So in order for me to account for this, I need to think about the total pressure of the mixture. And I know that, the, and I'm going to write this on the side, P total is going to equal to pH2 plus my partial pressure of H2O. And that partial pressure of H2O is the vapor pressure at that temperature of 23.5 degrees Celsius. If I were to rearrange this equation, if I want the partial pressure of H2, I would do P total, which is the atmos atmospheric pressure that I look up, minus pH2O at 23.5 degrees Celsius. And there should be a table, and there is a table of vapor pressure of water versus temperature. So that's another beautiful reason why we record the temperature of this water, to see what is the vapor pressure of water at this temperature. So I have my pressure, I have my volume, and I have my temperature. How can I get the moles of this gas? Well, we had a chemical reaction here. What amazing word can we remember that tells me the relationship between my moles of magnesium and my moles of hydrogen gas that should have formed? Well, for that, I know that I used about 0 0.01 grams of magnesium, or I could figure that out. I'm going to weigh that out. If I go from my mass of magnesium, and I'm writing this on here, mass of magnesium, hopefully you can see that. Mass of magnesium, I could go to moles of magnesium by dividing by the molar mass. So mass of magnesium to moles of magnesium dividing by the molar mass. And then how can I use my balanced chemical equation to figure out how many moles of hydrogen gas should have formed? Hmm. Well, for every one, since there's no, story, so since there's no number there, you assume one. For every one mole of magnesium, I should make, huh, I should make one mole of H2 gas from the balanced chemical equation. So my moles of magnesium should be equal to my moles of hydrogen gas. So I go from moles of magnesium, I use my mole ratio, aka stoichiometry, and I get my moles of H2 gas that formed. Okay? Now it wants the molar volume. I have, to, I have to erase this a bit. So I hope we all recorded this. If not, you have the video. You could pause it. I want to figure out the mol the molar volume of hydrogen gas. Okay. Now, if I want my molar volume, I'm going to just call it um, this weird N. All right, I'm going to make it this weird N, which is like a Greek letter. Um, so if I want my molar volume, molar volume, I have to think about what units, what units would be in molar volume. Well, if I hear the word molar, I think of moles. And if I hear the word volume, I think of liters. If I want the molar volume, this means how many moles are there in 
sorry, how many leaders are there? That's a mistake. How many leaders are there in one mole? That's what the molar volume of a gas is. How many liters are there in one mole? And we actually learned a number of, of the molar volume of gases at standard temperature and pressure. I want you to look that up. You could either Google it or look in your textbook. What is the molar volume of a gas at STP? Hmm, standard temperature and pressure is one atmosphere and 273 Kelvin. If you plug that into PV equals NRT, if you do V over N, you could figure out what that molar volume is. But for us, if I want my molar volume, I want how many liters there are in one mole. So I'm gonna take my liters of hydrogen gas and divide that by moles, and that's gonna be my molar volume of hydrogen gas, okay? So, if you take the liters that you got before of hydrogen gas and divide it by the moles that you got over here, that's going to be my molar volume. Okay? You're also going to check for moles of gas by using PV equals NRT. You could also see how much of your original magnesium reacted. If you do your mole to mole ratio, if that moles equals the moles that you use from PV equals NRT of hydrogen gas, that means all of your magnesium reacted. If not, I would use PV equals NRT to figure out my moles of hydrogen gas that reacted. So you're gonna use the pressure of hydrogen gas and the temperature of hydrogen gas and the volume of hydrogen gas to figure out the moles that reacted over RT of hydrogen gas. That's gonna to equal to my moles of hydrogen gas that reacted. So if this moles is not equal to the moles from the mole to mole ratio, you're going to have to make sure that you use these moles for that. Okay? Hopefully that helped you with your calculations. Uh, if you have any other questions, let me know. Sorry, I'm recording a video. No,